The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 469. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yapchan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on the show today. She is the founder of the Adam and Hawa Network, and I'm really excited to have her on today to share her story on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Harasha Bafana. Harasha, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to our listeners. Hi, hi, everybody. I'm based in Singapore. I run the Adam and Howard Network, which is business mentoring and consulting network that helps small business owners get the right knowledge and work with the right partners so that they can avoid making expensive mistakes. I also do a bit of national service here. I sit on the Agri Food and Veterinary Authority in Singapore. And along the way, I do a little bit of, I guess, volunteer work here and there. But yeah, that's a quick um, introduction to what I'm currently busy with. (laughs) Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And what's your cultural background? Okay, I'm a descendant of the Middle East. I mean, uh, my ancestors came from this part of Yemen called Hadramaut. So I'm an Arab by descent, but I'm born in Singapore, of course. And culturally, there is this Malay influence as well as local Arab influence. And because I'm in the Singapore education system, I mean, I was... I, I grew up going to school in, you know, in Christian mission schools because my parents wanted me to pick up good English because my parents were not highly educated and they wanted us, both my brother and I, to, to pick up Queen's English, you know, proper English. And, and so my friends have always been people from different backgrounds. And I think up till today, I really enjoy doing that. You know, so I'm a bit of a cosmopolitan person. Yeah, I guess, you know, all of us are like that, right? We've got layers of identity and that, that's, that's how I see myself. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? Being real works. That's, that's, that has been something that I discovered more than 10 years ago. Being real, being authentic, I guess they call it, but I just simply call it being real. And also about there is only one you in this world, you know? And so just be the real you. So I'm, I'm big about being, uh, you know, self-appreciating. And, you know, if you're not feeling good, you say you're not feeling good. If you're feeling nervous, you say you're feeling nervous. You don't pretend to be what you're not. And funnily enough, when you're being real, you overcome fear because there's nothing to prove anymore to anyone. You know, you drop the mask. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, it totally makes sense. I mean, you know, we we feel like if we don't share our true feelings, something's wrong with us, not realizing like just being your authentic self, having fears, learning to overcome them, being vulnerable. It's all part of confidence. And when we're confident enough to share what we're feeling, people can relate to us and they're more drawn to us. And, you know, that's when we can attract, you know, the right people into our life when we can, you know, even share our faults, our mistakes, our flaws, our strengths. Um, It's all part of it. So I really love that quote that you mentioned. And in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? It begins with appreciating yourself. It's difficult to be self-confident when you don't like who you are. It always begins with that. In fact, when I was growing up, I'm in my early 40s now, there was this makeup brand that was popular when I was growing up. Uh, it, I think it was called CoverGirl. And it had, it had a fantastic uh, tagline. It says, when you look good, you feel good. You know. Now, it, it sounds a little bit superficial, but actually, if you peel behind the words, I mean, I, I believe in that. It's like, you got to appreciate yourself. So for example, I'm a bit of a large lady, you know, um, and I don't fit into the so-called, you know, supermodel kind of frame kind of thing. But my self-confidence grew when I realized that, hey, you know what? You're fine the way you are. Your health is more important than whether you look, you know, impossible like like one of the supermodels or something like that. And I think it was through that that I started to kind of explore deeper. And in fact, um, one of the most interesting things I did when I was a teenager and struggling with appreciating myself for being, you know, I mean, for who I am, because I got, I got hair that looks different from other people. I got really kinky, curly hair, you know, and, and my, my body size is not like the typical Asian because I'm a bit larger and all that. What I did was I started maintaining a compliments journal. You know, and I literally wrote down something good that somebody said about me, which I would usually kind of not give, uh, pay any attention to it. 
Now, in my earlier years, that journal really helped me a lot. So it, it kind of encouraged the external encourage me to appreciate myself internally. And then from that point onwards, it became a bit easier for me to accept myself for who I am. Thanks for sharing that. And I love that definition. I always believe, you know, you have to start with yourself or else, you know, you're not going to re- know what you want, what you do, what you will tolerate, what you won't tolerate. Um, you know, learning to love and appreciate yourself is is the first step. So yes, thanks for sharing that definition. I really love that. And Rasha, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? I was holding back a lot, you know, and a lot of people around me, you know, including, of course, the the ones close to me could see that I I was actually capable of doing so much more. But that didn't really matter if I didn't see it because it was my blinders were on. It took a crisis in my personal and my business life to, you know, it was, it's really beautiful. It's like, it's like a creative destruction that God brought upon me, you know, that completely destroyed anything I held on for my self-worth. And most of those things were external, you know? Like I was running successful business with, with my brother and I had a great relationship or so I thought with a loved one. And then suddenly, within three weeks, everything fell apart. That, that happened about 10 years ago. And I tell you, Sheena, I do not know where I drew the strength from, but it was when I started from zero that I realized that the only place I could look is within myself you know and and so that was like my major turnaround in my life and it was painful it was frightening I felt like a, an aircraft that's going on a tailspin you know however I started reading and I started looking for answers so I turned to inspirational stories of people who have you know done amazing things in their life people thinkers like you know Dr Wayne Dwyer Deepak Chopra and I even studied the biography of Prophet Muhammad because these were people who broke through and and Nelson Mandela my all-time hero and the list goes on right and even Oprah Winfrey of course our modern day example and and when I looked when I read and I fed myself with such content I guess my consciousness began to shift and I drew strength from that confusion because I came from zero and I I was empty you know And, and so I could kind of open my eyes to what I've not been able to see before Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, I think that, you know, we all go, I like how you mentioned, you know, that you started from zero. And, you know, sometimes we might have to start from zero. And sometimes we might have to fall down, not realizing like we can always get back up. And, you know, the hardships in life always teaches us a great lesson, right? It shows us how much more capable we are, you know, how much stronger we are, seeing things in a different perspective, like you mentioned, opening our eyes to things we've been blinded for all our lives. And, you know, because of that, of these realizations, what's your life been like now? It's still a journey, Sheena, to be honest with you. You know, it's funny because I do certain daily practices. Okay, there's a couple of things that has worked so well for me and I and I cannot imagine living my life without these daily practices that I have so far depended on over the last 10 years since I had my, you know, that awakening thing. First, there's this deep conviction I have that any human being, including myself, of course, whatever bad things that so-called bad things that happen to us, it always happens for a reason. And that reason is good for us. We may not understand it at that point when things, you know, like like in my case, the things fell apart and all that stuff. However, looking back, you realize that, aha, uh-huh, now I can see the, you know, like what Steve Jobs once said, like connecting the dots. Now I get it. But at that moment when things were not working well or that crisis happened or that disappointment Appointment happened, that betrayal happened, or whatever it is, that so called failure happened. I call it so called failure because it's actually temporary defeat. You know, you, you never really fail because you keep moving forward, right? So, uh, one is that the, uh, you, we need to hold on to certain key principles that we deeply believe in because these are the things that kind of invisibly guide us in our day-to-day actions. Secondly, I journalize a lot. My journal is my best friend. I don't journalize on Facebook, you know. <laughs> Uh, if I have something to say, I write it in my journal. I, I, I empty myself on a daily basis into my journal uh, with, the, with the objective of improving myself, of learning from what happened in my, my life, in my day, whatever it is. And, and that has brought me a, so much value. And third, I practice a lot of solitude. Some go to the extent of calling it meditation. Meditation is an aspect of solitude. What I mean by solitude is really savoring our, you know, oneness. You know, like like you're alone, but you're not lonely. There's a huge difference there. 
Because when you're alone, your consciousness opens up to so many things that you do not see out there that kind of feeds you with good energy. So for example, nature or meeting complete strangers. And when you start smiling at complete strangers, I used to have this, I mean, in Singapore, people don't really smile. I mean, I'm sure Canadians are really friend friendly and they smile at each other and everything. But in Singapore, we are quite reserved, you know, typically Asian and all that stuff. And what we did was, what I did was I had my smile campaign. I forced myself to take the risk, you know, that's another scary everything right the rejection right what if i smile and people think i'm crazy but i did that i i i, I go around now automatically smiling at complete strangers and even if they don't return my smile which is rare because generally people respond that energy feeds you back you know and that feeds into your self-confidence and self-appreciation as well the fourth factor is certainly definitely most critically is to surround yourself with good people one of the best things i did for myself 10 years ago was i i took a real close look at the kind of people I was mixing around with and uh, this is no judgment to them but it's just that because I was growing I've had to change my circle you know the, the circle that I surround myself with and this circle need not be only physical people in your life it's like virtual circle as well and the knowledge circle like the, the, the mentors that I learn from the fifth thing that is different in my life right now is I feed myself with something inspirational and instructional on a daily basis as best as I can so I listen to and we are so fortunate right in the internet world we live in today literally you can get so much beautiful wisdom at your fingertips at zero cost except for your time so I um, I do that daily so my favorite mentors are people like the late Jim Rohn you know I, I love addicted to success because they share my values about being real about not being too violent in 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 expressing yourself is, is you know, you, you kind of curate the kind of environment you want to create yourself. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And I love the tips that you mentioned. I think it's great that, you know, any person can start doing that, right? Journaling, reading books, surrounding yourself with people. So thanks for sharing that. And Harasha, if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm on LinkedIn. Just look for Harasha Bafana, H-A-R-A-S-H-A-B-A-F-A-N-A. -A -A -A. I'm also on Facebook. In fact, I live on Facebook sometimes. And I've just launched my website, www.adamandhowernetwork.com. It's a little bit long, but it's A-D-A-M-A-N-D-H-A-W-A network.com. So yeah, I would love to, to, to welcome more people from all over the world and get to know more people. I mean, it's, it's wonderful when like-minded people come together, isn't it? Yeah, totally. Thanks for sharing that. And listeners, if you want to connect with Harasha, you can also head on over to the thetowofselfconfidence.com and search for Harasha's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I just really want to thank Harasha today for taking the time to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on your program, Sheena. Not a problem. It was an honor having you on the show. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Sign up for our free membership site to get more amazing resources for self-confidence by visiting our website at thetowofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.